So this is us at 4.30 in the morning. If you're flying via Cebu Pacific, be prepared to take the red-eye flight that departs Manila before 7 a.m. It's a bit of an effort, but the rates are great. You know what? You get an awesome view of the Manila sunrise with this flight. We took the sky bus from the airport into the city. While this is the most popular way to get out of the airport, it's a bit pricey at about $20 per person. Instead, try to find promos from ride-sharing apps such as Ola Cars, which might come out cheaper if you're traveling in groups of two or more. Our Airbnb was at 220 Spencer Street, right across the cross station. And this is my buddy Al, who I haven't seen in over 15 years. We met up for a dinner at Salad Tites, an institution for Greek food in Melbourne. All they really wanted to do for our first night was get drunk in a random pub, and we found United Backpackers Hostel on Flinders Street to be the perfect spot. Jet lagged and ahead by two hours, we still got up early to make our way to Hardware Society, which ended up being the best brunch we had during the trip. I had the lobster Benedict, while Jeanette had the French toast brioche with berries. Here I am trying to get a get ooze out of that eggs Benedict. Yum. After brunch, we decided to wander around the touristic spots around the CBD, seeing the iconic sights of Thunder Street Station and the graffiti at the Graves Lane. Tourists being touristy, check! Anytime is a good time for coffee, especially in Melbourne. Here's Brother Baba Boudin, a must in the many, many, many coffee stops in this lively city. And just like that, we're about done with day two. You can really lose yourself in the arts and everything that the Melbourne CBD has to offer. Don't even have an agenda and just wander around. Now it's time to lose ourselves over dinner. than coffee, the one thing you definitely must have in Australia is a steak. Great quality steaks come at bargain prices here since you are coming to the source. This steak at Meat Maiden is admittedly a little fancy with their dry aging process. But hey, this is the one meal we're really splurging on on this trip. On a full stomach, we bid you good night. So 
we're going to Brunswick, um, the Southern Cross Station, and the is being rebuilt or something for the upfield station, so I had to find another way to get there and go for a step today, so it's already been the sun's up. It's a good thing. See you later. We finally made it to Brunswick. Um, we're in a stop called Anstey. So there's a lot of great murals going on here. Um, we got off here instead of the previous stop, which is Brunswick, like the real Brunswick, because we're looking for Lux Foundry. So Vanessa wants to have supposedly coffee there, but it's already lunchtime since we kind of got lost. And After Janessa got featured on the Instagram page of Lux Foundry, we spent the rest of the afternoon walking around Brunswick, which is packed with vintage stores and retro items, if you like that sort of thing. More than being a hipster town, Brunswick's older structures and laid-back vibe is a great contrast to the modern feel of the CBD. The afternoon was spent in this local watering hole. If you notice by now, Janessa and I really live between coffee and alcohol when traveling. That's the kind of pace that we like. Now let me leave you and enjoy the relaxing countryside music at Monte Green. <laughs> This was an early day for us, so here's us fueling up at short stop coffee and donuts before we got on our way. This day was going to be big. We were spending the day outside the city and headed into the Yarra Valley for a full day of wine tasting at the vineyards. glass after the other. You'd probably finish the day with drinking almost two bottles of wine each. This was all fun and memorable with the breathtaking views and sights to behold. But more than anything, it's the bond you make with complete strangers that make this all worthwhile.
after a day's worth of drinking, we couldn't wait to have a hefty breakfast. We proceeded to Higher Ground Melbourne, located just beside our Airbnb. I'd have to say that this was the prettiest breakfast or brunch that we had during the entire trip. Today was going to be another easy-going day for us. We've just about stuffed ourselves in the past few days, so we finally decided to feed our minds instead. We wandered into the Immigration Museum of Australia. This isn't on the typical to-do list in Melbourne, but with Australia being a nation of migrants, I thought that this might be interesting. We wandered along the banks of the Yarra River and even crossed over onto South Bank. Nothing really specific to see here, but the idyllic views of Melbourne TBD and South Bank are great sights in themselves. I've shown some clips of this, but I haven't stressed this point just yet. Take time to really try the different local craft beers available. They say the water in Australia is what makes for superior beer, and you definitely shouldn't miss out. Oh, remember my friend Al? He took us out for another steak dinner, this time at the Crown Plaza. Thanks Al! Today we're headed into the world famous Queen Victoria Market. It's just at the tip of the Melbourne CBD, so you can still get to it through the free trams. It's pretty huge, but the one thing that really stood out for us is the American Donut Kitchen. It's honestly the best donuts in the world for me. I lined up for American Donuts. Also take the chance to check out the fresh seafood supply that the Queen Victoria Market offers. You can't get them any fresher than this. From the Queen Victoria Market, we made our way to the State Library Victoria. Now this comes out on every Melbourne Traveler's Guide, so I was curious and see the hype. I was expecting to be a bit disappointed, but the hype was definitely met. You can get lost in it for a whole entire day with the art and artifacts depicting Victoria's colorful past. We enjoyed this more than the National Gallery, which we'll be visiting later on. We didn't have heavy meals today, so we found ourselves snacking for more seafood as we made our way back. I almost forgot, don't miss out on having some fish and chips while you're in town. So it's our last day today, and guess what? We decided to take it easy again. <laughs> Well, we made sure we still filled up our day with good food and some sightseeing. Here at Tippo, Janessa had a nice gnocchi and had a wonderful rabbit pepper deli. The next 
stop was the NJV or the National Gallery of Victoria. This place had different types of art from classical to really funky modern contemporary ones. Last night, my buddy Al hit me up again to catch up a last time over drinks. We had happy hour over craft beer and proceeded to the town of Fitzroy. We went to this amazing tops bar called Naked for Satan. It had amazing views overlooking the city. That about wraps up our old Melbourne trip. I've highlighted sites and places we really enjoyed, but so that you don't forget, I've summarized them here. Number one, coffee, beer, and steaks. There's gonna be plenty of them, and make sure you don't miss out on any of them. Number two, if you have time, go visit a vineyard. It's gonna take a day to get out, and maybe some time for you to recover from your hangover, but it's fine, it's pretty much worthwhile. And number three, get lost in the CBD and don't get stuck with a hard itinerary. Enjoy some sightseeing, enjoy some people watching, and enjoy the different arts that Melbourne has to offer. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the seven days that we've spent here in Melbourne.